Well, it's a great Monday in Rome, Georgia, and uh, we're very, very pleased to have Kevin Sorbo with us today, along with Dr. Donald Dallas from Shorter University and Dr. Ben Bruce, the Vice President for University Advancement at, at Shorter University. And Kevin, we, we are so very excited to have you coming to Rome in December for the President's Gala. Uh, Shorter, of course, I, I'm sure you know by now, is, is a, a very strong Christian university and mm -hmm. I, I know the Christian faith has been an important part of your life since you were a child. Is that right? True. Yes, it, yes, it has been. Now, you grew up in Lake Minnetonka, uh, Minnesota, I believe, in Norwegian roots. Is that right? A town called Mound, Minnesota. We were on the <clears throat> western shore of Lake Minnetonka. And a little, a little trivia fact, we were home to Tonka Toys. Get it? Lake Minnetonka? There you go. Makes absolute perfect sense. It really, <laughs> really does. Now, uh, Kevin, as I understand, as a young teenager, you actually had an incredible experience with uh, Dr. Billy Graham. Te can you tell us about that? I was 13 years old in our church, St. John's Lutheran Church. We took about seven buses from our congregation in to see him at the St. Paul Fairgrounds. And it was outside. It was a hot August night. Full moon was out. And uh, there had to be, I don't know, 250 to 300,000 people. There was massive. And it was out outdoors. And uh, Billy Graham just rocked it, of course. And at the end of it, he said, I got a lot of volunteers up here if you want to come up and pray, talk, whatever. And I went up there, something I normally wouldn't have done at that age. And um, just, just out of, I guess, out of intimidation or something. But I, I went up there and sat in the ground and I was talking to this guy that uh, was one of his volunteers. And all of a sudden, a hand went on my head and I turned around and it was the Reverend Billy Graham. And his head was right behind the full moon so it is these lights shining out like it's like those photos they all those paintings that draw jesus he's always got a light around his head so um it, it was something that just stuck with me forever and he prayed for me and we chatted for a while about sports and school and uh it was pretty cool and i understand you have maintained a friendship with franklin graham through the years i met uh franklin gosh probably 20 years ago so uh in fact, I got to miss out on one thing he asked me to do about four or five years ago. It still bugs me to this day. I was shooting a movie and he invited me to go with him uh, to the North and South Korea uh, parallel there and pray at that line. But I, I couldn't go because I was filming a movie at the time. So I really, that would have been, I think that would have been quite an amazing, um, quite an amazing memory to be able to do something like that. Kevin, I, uh, I was watching uh, an interview you did on CBN. I'm not sure how long ago it, it was, um, but you described yourself as a, as a conservative Christian. Yep. And then you said, that's like being a double leper in Hollywood. <laughs> how, how has your faith, more so really than your politics, but how, how has your faith impacted your your chosen profession you know they hollywood doesn't want to work with people like us you know it's just it cracks me up i was there for many decades i had a same manager and agent for years they called me on one day and they said we can't work with you anymore because of the things you're posting i said oh you mean because i'm posting the truth on the internet i apologize for that but um uh, i i laughed at it i said this is ridiculous you know it's an industry that screams for tolerance for the agendas they want to shove down our throats um, and it's an industry that screams for freedom of speech, but they're hypocrites. It's all a one-way street with them. If you don't agree with what they say, then they, then you're out. It, it's interesting because, you know, it, it was the, the gay population in and out of Hollywood that used to be the ones in the closet. Now they have full control over everything. And uh, if you're a Christian, you're being uh, attacked. You're being, it's, I mean, in the Jewish community as well. I mean, it's just bizarre to me. If you make fun of any other religion outside of those two religions, uh, they'll attack you again because those religions, for whatever reasons, are being protected. And uh, Christianity, Judeo-Christianity, is what this country was founded on um, by our founding fathers, who were all men of men of the cloth themselves, uh, men of faith. So it's it's you you see what's going on. The world is upside down. Uh, you know, good is bad, bad is good, and everything is just crazy with the way they're treating people. But I'm going to fight on. I formed my own company, Sorbo Studios. I encourage your listeners to go to sorbostudios.com. Sign up. I've got uh, three movies in post-production. I've got three documentaries in post. And uh, I've been very, very uh, blessed to be able to keep doing movies that Hollywood used to do. You know, movies got hope, love, faith, redemption, laughter. Now you see what Hollywood's doing and um, people just are... Thank God they're not going to the theaters as often because for those movies, because Disney lost well over a billion dollars last year because people said enough of this woke entertainment because it's not entertainment at all. Now, at what point did you actually decide 
that you needed to develop your own studio? Because, I mean, we all know the Hercules and sure. we, 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 we know some of that stuff that, uh, that you've got in, a, in an amazing portfolio. But, you know, what made you really decide to go your own studio? Because that can't be cheap. Did it? Uh, it was right, pretty much right after I did a movie called God's Not Dead. Uh, about ten years ago is when I got the uh, the boot from Hollywood, and I, I realized from movies I'd done before, like Avenging Angel, a western I did, and What If. Uh, Dallas Jenkins directed that one. He's doing The Chosen now, and God's Not Dead. Actually, What If and God's Not Dead come from the same writers and went through the same production company, Pure Flix. And uh, to see the reaction of people stopping me at airports and hotel lobbies on the street, wherever saying, please keep making movies like that. And uh, a number of people saying I became a Christian because of your movies. And I realized this is the road that God had intended for me all along. I just didn't uh, pay attention to it until, um, you know, I hit a roadblock within the industry. And then I realized it's not a roadblock at all. It's actually just a better door for me to go through. And most of these movies that, uh, that you're talking about, God is dead. What if have done pretty well, haven't they? Very well. God's Not Dead um, was a $2 million budget, made $140 million. In the history of every single movie ever made in Hollywood, it ranks in the top five dollar for dollar return on investment. And I know people go, well, wait a minute. Uh, Avengers and Pipes of the Caribbean made $2 billion. I said, yeah, but they needed to make $800 million to break even. This movie had a 70 times return on its, re not a one and a half time return on its investment, it had a 70 times return. And yet we couldn't get on any of the mainstream media, of course, because, well, it's got God in it. And, you know, we've, through mainstream media, our, pol our politicians in Washington, D.C. and our, uh, in, in Hollywood, the movies they make, um, they've made, um, you know, anything being, having God in there is just a horrible thing. But I like to see that there's so many more independent producers out there now making movies like this. And even Hollywood is starting to realize there's an audience out there um, that's about 80 million homes in America that want the kind of movies that I'm doing. And I, I believe at one point you you went to Netflix with a with a potential project, and hmm. they basically turned you down too. They called me. I had a movie I did called Let There Be Light that my wife wrote. It's a wonderful Christmas movie. Um, it came on theaters in two, 2018, and we were up against a three hundred million dollar uh, Thor Ragnarok movie. Um, and we were we were about a two point three million dollar budget, and we were number two per screen average. So I get a call from Netflix saying they want to open an inspirational division with me running it. Had four meetings with them over the next couple months after that, and ultimately they did nothing. And I think it was just lip service. Um, they they were losing a lot of subscribers. So when they posted that I you know they're going to start doing inspirational films, it jacked up their membership again, and then they ne ultimately didn't do anything. Well, that's that's pretty sad. Uh, yep. I know you also at one time called yourself not a Hollywood type of guy. Um, was was the separation from Hollywood uh, in any way painful at all? I was never a Hollywood guy to begin with. So we actually lived 45 miles north of Los Angeles. So um, we I loved where we lived at that time. I loved the area we lived in. But uh, California just became a cesspool in so many different ways, not only with tax and traffic and politics, just just everything. So we left six years ago. And I always tell people we, 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 we left the worst governor in the country for the best governor in the country. We live in, we live in Florida here now for six years. That sounds like a great place to be unless it's hurricane season. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I want to touch on one other event uh, from, from the past, uh, Kevin, that I've, that I've read about. Uh, you, you had a, a near death experience uh what uh, if i remember right about the, the end of the fifth season of hercules is that right yeah i um you know i was doing most of my own stunts because my ego said that i could i was getting bumps and bruises and sprains and cuts all the time but this thing was kind of weird the pain in my shoulder down in my arm down in my hand it was all my whole left arm was just constantly in pain and um uh they found an aneurysm up here in my left subclavicle uh but before we knew what it was um, I went to my chiropractor and he cracked my neck, which he never does. In eight years, he's never cracked my neck. And there was a voice telling me, don't let him crack your neck, which I thought was really weird that this voice is warning me because in eight years, he never has because I don't like my neck cracked. Well, he cracked it. And that whiplash from left to right, uh, what neurologists call retrograde flow, when the blood flow is the opposite direction for a short period of time due to whatever mine was a neck twist, uh, it sent uh, that aneurysm sent clots into my brain. I suffered three strokes and it took me 
uh, four months to really learn how to walk and balance again. It took me three years to fully recover from it. So I wrote a book. It's called Left Me. Uh, it's called um, True Strength, My Journey from Hercules to Mere Mortal and How Nearly Dying Saved My Life. And that actually opened up the road for me to do speaking events. I didn't write the book to do speaking events. Um, I did a follow-up book called True Faith, and I've done a couple of children's books. We've done a couple of um, uh, Christmas books as well. And, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's interesting that all of a sudden this sort of became a little sign line, uh, like for me, because it's been amazing to meet the people I've been able to meet and to hear, uh, their stories as well. So, um, I mean, I, it, it's, it's, it's just funny how, you know, God leads you on these roads that you were not expecting to be on. Well, I, I know we're looking forward to hearing from you in person on December 5th, shorter as, as a, a as a Christian based university. Uh, is is turning out a lot of future leaders in a lot of different uh, fields of study. Is there any particular advice you might give them uh, as as you uh, prepare for this, and and particularly that that commitment to remaining strong in the faith in in the face of adversity? To say, to put it mildly, probably God never promised any of us an easy life. Jesus even said that himself. Where you know we're we're here in this world. He said, as as if you follow me, you will be attacked as I'm being attacked, and that's certainly what's happening to uh, Christians around the world. So um, I would say use it as a badge of honor more than anything else, and don't let anyone set your limitations, especially yourself. You're going to hit these roadblocks in life. Everybody's got a story, but the reality is. Uh, you know, your your faith in God, your faith in Jesus and the walk with him is only going to make you stronger and braver. Because right now we have too many sheep out there. We need the lions to wake up. So uh, I, I'm, I'm sure what the university is doing is is raising people to be lions, which is awesome. That sounds like the name of another book, Kevin, Too Many Sheep. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me bring in our president, Dr. Donald Dallas. Kevin, this is a light to be able to talk with you. And I just want to tell you how much we appreciate you being willing to come to Shorter. It means a lot because you're an inspiration. We have a very vigorous student body. We have uh, uh, theater majors, musical theater. And so I appreciate the fact that there's someone they can look at and know that loves Jesus Christ and can be a success in their chosen profession. So when you come and even when you leave, uh, I know that uh, God will use you mightily, and so I'm very appreciative of that. And I also wanted you to know that we will pray for you, lift you up. Um, I kind of liked your when you were in Andromeda, but that's another story. I'm I did, I did too. <laughs> yeah. But but I just it's it's amazing to me, and I appreciate the fact that you're vocal, and that you're not afraid to talk about Jesus Christ. And you say it with such sincerity and commitment that it encourages all of us. So please, even when you leave shorter uh, after the event, always remember that we need your encouragement. And thank you for encouraging us to stay strong. As brothers in Christ, uh, we're moving to a great future. and We just want to bring more and more people uh, along with us. So thank you for being agreeable to come to our school. My pleasure. I tell you, I want to be able to meet your uh, your film department there because one of your rival schools, in a good way, Liberty University, because there's only a handful of you guys across the country, um, uh, They, I did a movie with them earlier this year. So maybe we got to set up a movie with uh, at your university as well, which which would be uh, an honor for me to do. It'll be a privilege for us. We they're, they're going to be sitting where you can talk to them. So they're wonderful people and we're going to a play Thursday night, so uh, oh, it's a wonderful event. We all know ele an election is coming up, and it uh, it amazes me every single election period. More than, well, more than fifty percent of Christians across this country do not vote. I do not understand that whatsoever. I've talked to a couple of them, and they say, "Well, I don't agree with the Democrats, but I just don't like Donald Trump." And I go, well, "You don't like that he made the country better? You don't like? I mean, it's weird to me. It's like going." So if you're not going to vote for him, that's the vote for Harris, who's only going to make the world a, a more unstable place as far as I'm concerned, because three and a half years of what they've done in this country is unbelievable. And uh, we need to get people to get out there and vote. It's, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous and shameful that Christians are not voting, because every election cycle, as you know, every two years, the first or the second most important topic to these people is killing human beings. I am a pro-life speaker. 
And it is it is murder, and we need to stop this. It's it's unbelievable to me that we've got to this place where people think it's just a normal way of life. And the, the Democrat Party, as you know, they they push that, they push that, and push that. I mean, we are we are having uh, unbelievable satanic things happening in America right now, and we need to fight back. And the only way to do that is through the power of God and the power of Jesus. Well, Kevin, once again, thank you so very much. For, for folks who would like to uh, hear and see Kevin in person, please visit shorter.edu slash gala for tickets and sponsorships. I'm sure, Dr. Dallas, there's, there's an opportunity for additional sponsorships as well between now and then. Yes. And all of the money raised will go towards student scholarships. Kevin, thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you in Rome. Thank you. Follow me on sorbostudios.com. Sorbo